I have an air conditioner unit right here that is slightly low on refrigerant. It had a little leak at the Schrader valve, that's already fixed. So all I have to do now is just add some R22 to it. And I have a video where I show a improper way of how to add R22. I got quite a bit of flack for that. Uh, but if you're interested to see that, you can check that video out. But in this video, I wanna show you the proper way of adding R22 uh, using the wet bulb, the dry bulb, and superheat and subcooling. So I have my gauges already on. I got the high side and the low side connected. But in order for us to charge, to find out what to charge by using the superheat or the subcooling method, I first need to find out what metering device is inside at the A-coil. That will determine if I'm gonna have to add using the subcooling method or the superheat. If I have a TXV metering device, I will be using the subcooling. And if I have a piston or fixed orifice, I will be using the superheat. So on this tag, it says metering device, TXV indoor. So supposedly it has a TXV metering device, but from my experience, just because it says something on here doesn't mean that's what's inside. So the best way is to visually verify what kind of metering device you have inside. So let's go ahead and try to do that right away. Okay, so we're inside and in this setup, the A coil or the evaporator coil is sitting right on top of the furnace and the metering device is gonna come in on the discharge line and it'll be right behind here. So let's take this putty off and take a look inside. Unfortunately, the hole is a little bit small. I can't quite tell what kind of metering device we have. Basically, all we're looking for is if it's a TXV or not. Sometimes you'll get lucky and that metering device will actually be right in front of the A-coil, all insulated and stuff. In that case, you don't need to look inside. But in our case, I can't really see it, so we do have to peek inside somehow. So let's put this putty back on. And then I think what I'm gonna do is just, looks like there's a hole back here. I'm just gonna take this tape off. That looks like an easy access point. So one way or another, either you take off screws, bend it a little bit and peek inside, or if you have a convenient little opening like this, or maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just puncture it. Ever since I started wearing a pocket knife in my pocket, I've never regretted it, so let's see. Okay. There you go. So I'm not sure why this hole is here, but it is. And that's actually pretty convenient for me to take a look over there and see what kind of metering device we have. So I found a little mirror. If you have an inspection camera, then that makes things really convenient. And unfortunately, you're probably not gonna be able to see what I'm looking at, but basically I'm just looking at this wall right here to see what kind of metering device I have. And I'll let you know what I find. Okay, so what I see is a TXV metering device, which is right, right behind here. So that's what I thought it was, but I just wanted to confirm and make sure. So right behind we have the TXV metering device, which means we're gonna be using the subcooling method to figure out how much refrigerant we need to add. So let's put this back. And I'm gonna to need to get a piece of tape. And we'll just go ahead and tape this back up. Okay, we have another layer of tape. I guess we'll count that as extra insulation. And while we're inside, we may as well get our wet bulb as well. I used to use a UEI psychrometer. Now I use an amp probe and I've been really liking it. This amp probe is, it works very nice. So it's a digital psychrometer and what we're after is the wet bulb. So you do need to get the wet bulb reading from indoors. You can take this reading pretty much anywhere in the house. Some techs will recommend getting this reading right by the return. So you find the biggest return grill in the house and measure it there. Uh, some guys say to just measure it in the mechanical room by the furnace or stick it into the return. I just generally take this reading right by the furnace. So right here, we got wet bulb. We can shake it around, make sure it's getting a good reading. 
let it stabilize. So our wet bulb is probably going to stabilize at 69 degrees. Okay, so we found out that it's a TXV inside. We found out our wet bulb. I got my refrigerant right here. We have our gauges hooked up. I got my meter with a temp clamp. I don't have an infrared gun right now, so I'm gonna use a regular old pipe clamp on here. Put that on our discharge, because that's where we get our subcooling reading. I have a video on where to, not where to, I have a video on how to read superheat and subcooling. If you want more on that, you could look at that video. Switch that to temp. Okay, so everything's hooked up and ready. Actually, I gotta hook up my tank. And I wanna actually talk a little bit more about this because on the previous video, the improper way, um, a lot of people were asking about why were you adding it in vapor? Aren't you supposed to add it in liquid? What's a vaporizer, et cetera, et cetera. So long story short, if it's a blended refrigerant, you can only add that as a liquid, which means you will flip the tank upside down. With R22, which is not a blended refrigerant, you can add it as a vapor and that's actually preferred. But the thing is, as the refrigerant, as you have less and less refrigerant in the tank, as you're using it up, there's not enough pressure inside the tank to push it inside the unit. In that case, you would flip it over and use the liquid. Now, when you're adding refrigerant as a liquid, regardless of what kind of refrigerant it is, you want to throttle it in or use a vaporizer. So the vaporizer is basically a little device that turns your liquid refrigerant, you basically attach it to your fitting on your hoses, and that little device turns your liquid refrigerant into vapor before it comes into the unit as you're adding it. So that's a vaporizer, or you can use the throttling method. And what that is, is as you're adding refrigerant, you wanna open your gauge just slightly so that the pressure goes up not more than 10 to 15 PSI over the starting point. So wherever the arrow is already at, when you start adding refrigerant, you don't wanna open it full blast. You wanna just open it so it goes up by about 10 PSI. And then you just keep adding like that and making sure that that arrow does not go more than 10 PSI from the starting point. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about here, check out my previous video where I opened it full blast as I was adding it as a vapor and you'll see the difference. So in this video, I'm gonna be adding it as a liquid to show you an example of that. I'll flip the tank over and I'll be throttling it in, just opening up slightly and adding refrigerant until we get our required subcooling reading. Now, normally I would use the super cool slide rule chart to figure out how much refrigerant I need to add. I've lost mine, but that's okay. Um, right on the nameplate, it says that uh, it's kind of faded out. You're probably not going to be able to see it, but it says indoor TXV subcooling 13 degrees. So that's our target subcooling. We want it to be about 13 degrees. Everything's ready. In order to add refrigerant to the unit, we do have to have the unit running though. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the unit on and then we will proceed to add refrigerant until we get 13 degrees of subcooling. And by the way, if your nameplate is completely faded out, or for some reason it doesn't even have a rating what the TXV subcooling should be, then the average for most units is somewhere between 10 to 12 degrees of subcooling if you have a TXV. And also there's an app if you're gonna, met, if you're gonna add by superheat or subcooling, this app will work for both of them. I prefer using the chart but if you're in a pinch or if you need something quick, it's called Super Cool. Pretty sure this is the same people that make the Super Cool slide rule. So here's the app, this is what it looks like. It has a bunch of charts that you can use, troubleshooting guides and all of that. So you press charge a unit, it asks you what it is. Is it non-TXV or TXV? So let's just say it's TXV. You pick what refrigerant you're using. Let's say it's R22. And see right here, it asks you what your target subcooling is. In our case, it would be 13 degrees. That's what we're looking for. We go to next, and this app makes it really fairly easy. All you have to do is put in the numbers, press calculate, and it'll tell you what to do. So let's look at our gauge here. Our high side pressure is at 150 PSI. 
So let's put that in. There we go. 150. And our liquid line temperature, I already have my clamp on there, is 81 degrees. So let's set that to 81 and press calculate. So right here, it tells me add refrigerant. So basically what this app wants you to do is add some refrigerant, put in your new numbers, press calculate again, until it tells you that you're in the green. Um, but I'm not gonna use this app right now. I'm just gonna keep measuring my subcooling until I have about 10 to 13 degrees. Just wanted to show you guys just in case somebody wants to try using this. Or if you know of an app that's even better than this one, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. So to measure subcooling, we're gonna do the gauge saturation temperature minus the line temperature. So we got about 80 degrees on our high side and 81 degrees for the line temperature. So we pretty much barely have any subcooling at all. It's pretty much a zero. So we're probably a little bit lower than I even thought, or maybe the TXV is just compensating for that. So let's go ahead and add some refrigerant, and I'm gonna use the throttling method, like I mentioned before. So right now we're at 75 PSI. I'm gonna go up to about 85 PSI when I open this up. So I'm opening up really slightly. If you open this thing up full blast in liquid, you can slug the compressor. You never wanna do that. So I can close this up again. I'm still at 75, so I'll open it and go up to somewhere about 85, 90 PSI. That's 10 to 15 degrees more than my starting point. And that arrow is kind of bouncing up and down because that liquid refrigerant is getting sucked into the unit. And that's how you throttle it in. You just keep doing this. You add a little bit, you close it, you wait a little bit for it to stabilize. With a TXV, it takes a little bit of time for it to adjust. And then you keep opening it and adding a little bit more, a little bit more, until you get close to your target subcooling or target superheat if you don't have a TXV metering device. So right now, our saturation temperature is 90 degrees and our meter is 76. So we actually have 14 degrees of subcooling right now. So I'm gonna stop adding and just wait for it to stabilize. Okay, so it's been a couple of minutes. This went down to about 89 degrees and this is pretty steady at 76. So that's right about at that 13 degree subcooling that we were looking for. So that is perfect. This unit is charged like it should be. The suction line is sweating profusely, which is also a good sign. And I think I'll just go inside and also take the temp drop, our Delta T, and make sure we have a good temp drop as well. And then we'll call it good. Well guys, and that is how to properly charge or recharge an air conditioner unit. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. Thank you.